This is a 136 to 1 planetary gear reduction motor and we're going to make a mini bot with it. Welcome to Hack a Week. Yep, we're getting back to the roots here. Some robot stuff. I've had a lot of requests in the last several months to make a simple robot that runs uh, on an Arduino compatible controller uh, using C programming. And I've chosen Pololu uh, Robotics. I think I'm pronouncing that right. That's the best I can figure out. Um, Pololu.com. They've got some really cool stuff. All kinds of neat robotics. They've got kits already made that you can just add on things to. A neat little uh, Zumo bot it's called. I think it's about $100, $125. But I want to do uh, a little mini bot here and the whole uh, I guess if you will mission statement on this project would be build it really tiny uh, just really minimal on the batteries and very small motors and as you saw that motor is indeed really tiny and the neat thing about that motor is it will mount in a standard five millimeter fuse holder so you can build the whole thing on one of these perf boards and then we've got a microcontroller that I picked up uh, from Pololu I think this was uh, about fifteen dollars maybe tiny tiny little thing that's it right there above my finger it's itty bitty and it will run on, I think it's three volts, this one. Uh, they have another version that runs on five. We're using the uh, motor shield here. This is some of the inspiration for this whole thing. I saw it in Make Magazine a couple of months ago. It was a new release. They're only like, uh, I think $9, $6 cheap. It'll run four motors. So let's go ahead and uh, Get over here in the workbench where you can see what's going on and I'll explain uh, the basics of what it is I want to do with this mini bot. There it is. Everything that I picked up from Pololu and I think I spent a grand total of about $86. Um, including shipping. Shipping and handling was only $8.45. So that little motor driver, this guy, item number 2511, uh, it was let's see 695 and then I've got some little wheels here that will go onto those gear motors I got a couple of sets of them those are only 390 a pair and then we've got this little single um, ultrasonic sensor it's kind of like a, a parallax ping sensor but it's just a single one and those were let's see 2495 and what else uh, USB cable to the mini plug just to make sure I had an extra one to uh, program the microcontroller. Uh, that wasn't too much. Um, I'm not seeing that on the order here right now, but anyway. Oh yeah, there it is. $2.49. The motors, the little plastic gear motors, um, let's see, those are $11.95 each. So grand total of $23.90 for that little guy. Tiny, tiny little thing. Look at that. Isn't it cute? Um, they're rated uh, at 136 to 1. They also sell them in some other gear reductions. So it should just be a nice little creepy around robot. And let's see, we got the A Star 32U4 microcontroller unit. And that was $12.75. And it's got a really tiny little footprint there. Not very big at all. And then uh, a battery holder. I got a couple of battery holders, the coin cell battery holders. Got the kind that will hold two. So let's see, that's six volts that I'll have to work with there. And then from that other video, I've got that little uh, Ignite lighter that I could tear apart and actually use this for a battery source optionally. But first we'll go ahead and just build everything up and then figure out what we're gonna do with this later. So the general plan is to lay it out on this uh, this perf board. Let's see, this measures about, uh, looks like about two, about roughly two and three quarters by uh, almost two inches. There should be plenty of room to lay it out on. I may even end up making it a little bit smaller, but 
let's see if we get the uh, the battery pack there and then I could probably put the uh, motor drive here and I can put the microcontroller back here somewhere up front I can mount the uh, sensor the ultrasonic sensor I've got a little on off switch on the battery holder that's pretty nifty and then we'll just work on the back side here and mount the motors to the, uh, the little fuse holders let's get some stuff out of the bags here and uh, show you what's going on with that so let's go ahead and open up some of this stuff um, let's see let's get the uh, the wheels out pull a couple of wheels out of here we'll take out one of the motors we'll see how this all goes together they should just push right on that's it that's pretty cool it's a neat little setup micro stuff we're doing here so those will mount on these five millimeter fuse holders these are meant to solder into a circuit board or a perf board and that gear motor will just clip right in there just like that how cool is that you just solder that up to the perf board and then you just mount the gear motor on there and it's it's pretty solid I could use two of them if I crimp the ends right there where those little uh, pieces are pushed in that stops the fuse from sliding past the end I'll bet if I crimp those I can uh, probably put two of these on a motor and let's get out the uh, the max sonar of course I'm gonna have to look up the uh, the code how the code works for these things on the Pololu website we have some sample code there um, I'm kind of a a bit of a copy paste C programmer um, you know I can sit down and, and write some very rudimentary basic stuff but what I ended up doing is usually finding another program cannibalizing it learning from that experience and uh, along the way I learned how to code uh, some stuff the next time from scratch so there's the little sensor it's got uh, pins here for a header so I can go ahead and and uh, put that on the board uh, some right angle headers would have been nice but I did not buy those so we'll figure something out on that let's see let's get the motor shield out see what that's all about this is pretty cool it comes with some screw on terminal blocks that you can just plug the wires into to go to your motor and hook them up quite easily uh, a little jumper there I'm not sure for what but we'll probably figure that out once we look at some instructions but there it is there's the whole thing pretty cool neat little motor driver and cheap too so that's that let's take a look at the microcontroller that's going to be the brains behind this little beastie comes with some header pins and that's it tiny neat little thing got a mini USB connector right there and um, coin cells pick the coin cells up really cheap um, I ordered those on a separate order but uh, they're they're pretty cheap I got those where did I get those I think I got these from spark fun um, for like a quarter a piece or something they're I don't know don't quote me on that but they're really really cheap if you get them somewhere besides a drugstore or Radio Shack or anywhere else for that matter as mentioned earlier I needed some right angle uh, header pins I found some here on this old power supply out of a computer so I can just desolder it right along here pull that board off and then desolder these and pull those off and I'll have a whole mess of right angle header pins to use so on this little ultrasonic sensor, the Max Sonar, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. So let's see. Let's go ahead and find seven of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just need to cut one off from here, and I'll have the seven that I need. There we go. And let's see. I guess it doesn't really matter which way we do uh, yeah it does let's go ahead and put these whoops get back here put these in like this 
then we can solder them to that side and then this side goes towards the perf board. Last one to the ground and there we go. It's ready to mount on the perf board. So we want the sensor to be centered up on the front of our bot just like our eyeballs are on the front of our head that looks pretty good right there. Let's flip this over and we'll get some solder on every one of these pads. Well, that's all mounted up and what I can do later now is just put the wire in right here on one of these holes that would go to each one of the terminals and just bend the wire over and jumper it right to that terminal with a little bit of solder. I've got to put some header pins on the motor controller so let's go ahead and do that. Three of them, let's see, we'll get it this way, three are going to go right there. If I clamp this in the third hand tool I think I can just push it down against the bench and then yeah the header pin will stay right there and I can go ahead and solder that one up. We have three terminal blocks now that go in and they go there, there, and there. Those are for the motors, uh, for the power that goes to the motors. The logic and the motor power is separate on this board. So if I just get all three of those set in there, I think I can do this just like that. Just let the board lean on the bench right there. And let's see, I need something to push against, so maybe I can just set the third hand tool back here so that when I work on it, it doesn't want to scoot across the bench. And we'll go ahead and solder these up. So now we can decide where we want this on our board. It won't fit that way, um, but it will go that way. So I can go ahead and push that through some holes here. It looks like it's going to go end to end. You know what? I think that's going to work just like that. Yep. There we go. It's on there. And they're poking through the bottom okay. It sits a little bit high on the end over here because of the offset of the pins. Well, I managed to squish those through a little bit further so it sits down a little bit more tight to the board. Now what I need to do is just clip all these header pins back because I don't need them poking through. This is going to be the bottom of the robot so I don't want anything poking around uh, that could catch on anything while it's driving around. Now we move on to the A-Star 32U microcontroller. We're going to go ahead and put the ISP header in. There's six pins on there. ISP standing for In System Programmer. And uh, we'll solder that on there. We have two more sets of header pins that go here, 10 pins on each side. So we can just put both of those in and set it right down on the bench like so. And then we'll go ahead and solder those up. Now I'll just go ahead and do one pin and make sure that the pins are nice and straight and then do the rest of them. Now we've got that all soldered up with the header pins, we can find a place for it to live on the board here. Um, that's probably not too bad right there. That gives me um, access to these pins right here, these holes, where I can connect wires to the pins. I can't really put it this way, I don't think it's going to fit. Nope, there's not enough room. So we'll just do that. Let's put it towards... Uh, Put it all the way at the end. Now wait a minute, we'll back up one. That way we've got a hole lined up with that pin right there. 
So all of these holes here I can run a wire through to connect to this side and I can run a wire through all these holes to connect to this side. And we're going to cut all those header pins away too. Ding, 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 as the header pins fly across the workbench to God knows where. Probably should do that over a trash can. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. And last, but certainly not least, well, almost last, uh, the motors. I've got two little uh, fuse holders on each one of the motors now, and we need to mount those up. And it looks like they'll go right there, just like that. So they're in the perf board. Obviously, I cannot solder them on this side, so what I have to do is just anchor them with a little bit of solder on this side of the board. So I can just solder that wire now across those little terminals that are poking through. Put a pretty good sized bead of solder on there, and that will help hold those fuse holders in place. Very important that they stay tight because that's what holds the motor in. Looks pretty good, pretty straight on there. And if I wanted them to for sure stay in there, I suppose I could just uh, drop a little bit of some super glue on there and give it a shot, but it should stay on just fine. Okay, let's get the other two mounted up. There we go, motors mounted up. Cute, huh? They just clip into those fuse holders. Well, that should work out pretty okay. This is going to be a tail dragger bot, so I'll just put some kind of a little skid on the back here. I guess I could just make that out of a piece of paper clip, just about anything, because when it turns, it's just going to do that. One wheel will stop, and the other one will just pivot on it. So that's all it needs to do. I could make it tank steer, where one backs up, and then it would rotate on an axis like that. But just having something back there for it to drag, get it up off the ground a little bit, should be okay. It would probably do fine just like that, dragging its ass around without anything on it. This is my solution for the tail of the beast. Little tail dragger skid. It's just a paper clip bent in such a way that it can barely get through the hole. It's got that uh, like vinyl coating on it. One of those paper clips works great because the vinyl keeps it from poking all the way through the hole. And if you put it in the hole with the right kind of a bend in it, you can just barely get it in there. And then it'll just stay and it can pivot around and it won't fall back out. You have to really work to get it back out. And it should do the trick. It will just be able to pivot back and forth and it will keep the rear end up off the ground. So there it is, mostly assembled. We're ready for the wiring on the bottom and top and the programming of the microcontroller. We've got to mount the battery pack still, but we're going to stop there for this week and we'll get to all the wiring and programming next week. I still find it amazing that inside that tiny little motor is actually a planetary gear reduction. I might have to just take one of those apart sometime just to take a look at it. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the donations, and until next time... This is a 136 to 1 ratio planetary thing.